Victoria. I am an illustrator and today I want to take a stab at redoing the cover for uh, one of my favorite books of the year, Gideon the Ninth. And this is not a bad cover, but it's just not quite my style. It's not quite the way that I would have gone again. <laughs> not to say that uh, whatever I design today is going to be like better for this book. I just kind of thought it would be a fun exercise to take this book that I really like that has a subject matter that's pretty intense and funny and dark. Pair it with my more kids lit leaning style and see what we can come up with. So first we're going to take a look at Pinterest and see if we can find some inspiration as far as other covers or illustration styles that I like and I'll draw my dream Gideon the Ninth cover. Welcome to my Pinterest. I've been going through and finding a lot of these really cool illustrations recently. The two main styles that I think I'm kind of leaning towards for this cover are either this kind of really vintagey, kind of embossed style. I think that could be really cool, especially if we do some Kanan House image. If you haven't read Gideon the Ninth, it is set largely in Kanan House, which is a really big uh, palace. Probably one of the sketches, one of the concepts will be like that. I love this Hans Christian Andersen one. This one's really cool. Oh, God, this Faust one's really cool, actually. Um, by Goethe. It's also very cool. Um, okay, so this is, this is kind of style one, is uh, this pretty vintage embossed book. Um, and the other way we could go with it is in this style. Julia Sanda does a lot of these really cool kind of spooky flat illustrations um, that remind me a lot of Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Um, it kind of reminds me of like a spooky uh, Mary Blair type thing. Um, and I really like that style as well. So. Something like that could be cool. This could be cool. I love the look of this cover. So even though it is, you know, a very different vibe from Gideon the Ninth, I think that there is a very cool aspect of how the, the name is really small and it's just this really big, this really big illustration that really takes up the whole page. Ha, got you. Everyone say goodbye to Nagi. Bye bye Nagi. So I think it'll probably be kind of one of those two. So, so one of the concepts I have is taking the main character, kind of having her standing in front of the really big palace that the book take, takes place in and having her be kind of, having the perspective make her look really tiny just because of how big the house is. Okay, this Coraline one is also similar to something I was thinking about. I was thinking about having something kind of like this, but having Kanan house uh, and having it just like cut into these really jagged cliffs and then have ocean underneath. I think I will sketch out a couple of thumbnails for different options, uh, see what I think works the best, uh, and then we can jump into an illustration. Let's uh, let's take a stab at this. The options we had, one, Kanan house, big, looking at the house, I have Harrow in there as well. Already walking towards the house. She has her little cloaky thing up. Uh, yeah, so this could be this could be one option. Something like that. More just kind of like ah, the the sea is a harsh mistress kind of vibe. Another concept I had was kind of going for like the uh, those like Times covers. And then in here, we can come in and do like Kanan House. I don't know why I'm really attached to this idea of Kanan House having these like really weird windows, kind of like horror murder mystery game, <laughs> like some kind of, just like, a, it's just a spooky castle. I don't know what you want me to say. set this up like this so I would look up and 
fix my posture when I'm drawing, but as you've just seen, I just look at my iPad. But I'm gonna try. Okay. Oh god. I never um, managed to use the Wacom tablet for this reason. <laughs> Ugh. Really what I want is like some... Hold on, hold on, hold on. What if we put Gideon here? Like that. And then we had behind her, Hero, just kind of out of frame. some kind of like sneaky skeletons in the back here. I don't know if that would translate though. God, this is very funny. This does not look like how I thought it would look. Um, I kind of want... Original book has these like, just kind of random skeletons in the back. Oh God, can't even see that. Which is kind of sick. Um, there's a lot of bones in these books if you haven't read them and Wow. Ah! <laughs> all right, this guy can go. Um, all right. The three concepts we have. This one, which would be a lot of line art, I think, and a, a little more of kind of a dark, serious take. This, which I like. Let me, oh, God. I'm gonna just be such a tool. God, how do I... Okay, but how do I draw a skeleton face? that isn't the Punisher. I don't know anything about the Punisher. Wait, oh, I'm gonna put the sunglasses on it. <laughs> That's not what the windows would look like, but we have this this option, which is again, kind of a line already take. Um, this would probably be like primarily just two colors. And then we have this one, which is kind of like an 80s buddy cop comedy, which uh, I also love. Two kind of similar ones, one pretty different one. Okay, I'm gonna ask my girlfriend uh, and she's gonna help me. And then I will also ask some of uh, our friends. Okay. Either the, s the first or the second. Okay. The tone of this reminds me of Paul Blart Volta, <laughs> but I think you wouldn't make it look like that. But also if you did, that wouldn't be a problem. I do like this one. I think the uh, I think that's very fun. Yeah. So I received one vote for each cover, which is not helpful. <laughs> so I'm going to do uh, the Buddy Cop one just because it is the most different. All right, I pretty much used the same two brushes exclusively. I, uh, I guess three if you count the, the shading pack. They're all from Retro Supply Co. And I use this perfect gouache, you know, thick, heavy, wet gouache. And then we have this dry gouache. That's how I do most of my detail work. And then I use this uh, sibling brush. I think maybe, yeah, maybe this cover should be in black. And then we'll go in with white and lay down some of these details. This is definitely not the vibe of the book, but I do think it's fun. <laughs> also, I think Gideon would like it, so. I'm trying so hard to look up. not going great, guys.
if I gave her a little like, oh, <laughs> little doofus. I kind of feel like Gideon has like perfectly maintained eyebrows. Not gonna lie guys, not sure how I'm feeling about this right now. Oh, okay, hold on. Dimple may have changed everything. One dimple. One dimple for Gideon. Maybe, oh, okay. Maybe what we'll do is we'll do the background in something like that so we can get the function. Hmm. Hmm. I think this is more interesting. I'm gonna try this. A lot of people draw Harrow with like this really, just like really cool looking. And I love that. But also she's like, she's just like this tiny baby nun nerd. And I kind of like giving her a really like cherubic face. Okay, so we'll have little baby hero. This color palette really just like kills me. That, that's fun. Um, I don't think that Canaan House looks like a medieval castle, but I love the concept, especially kind of like a fucked up one. Fucked up little fun house. So nice. Can I show them? Uh huh. Sasha's doing fan art of the book that she just wrote. Is it fan art if it's my own book? I think we're gonna need another big kind of like graphic element in the black. It could be Hero's cloak. Yeah, okay. Yes, yes. I mean, ooh, okay, so there's a couple ways I could do this. I can either have this be in white or, okay, clipping that. We're gonna duplicate the, God, this is probably an incredibly stupid way to do this. We're gonna duplicate this layer, alpha lock it, Grab this color. I'm just gonna. Okay. Um, 
part of me that wants to do the the like waves of the ocean with her hair, but that does feel like maybe a little too douchey. <laughs> currently working on the title, which I'm going to do in Photoshop and then I'll probably bring it back into Procreate to do the finishing touches slash figure out what's going on with Hero's face here. Something, something is off, but I'm not sure what. Still kind of evokes like a, an old kind of like religious tome vibe. This is the Goop font, if you're wondering, Caslon. I have like a million of those. Ooh, okay, wait, I do kind of like this. Um, I'm going to Gideon in all caps, and then made it a little bit. Um, okay, well, I definitely like that for this. Ooh, wow. Okay, this does actually remind me a lot of this font, and I do, I'm not gonna lie, I do love the way that it, like, nestles. Okay, I actually like this a lot. Is it cheesy? Yes, but this is a book about lesbian space necromancers. So I think I can do what I want. So I am going to do some finishing touches and then um, mock this up onto a book so you can kind of see what it would look like. But this is generally it. This is a very fun redesign. I'll insert the finished cover here. Let me know if there are any other books you want me to design covers for. Let me know if there are other variations you want to see. This was very fun. I love Gideon the Ninth. Y'all should go read it. Then I'll talk to you next time. Bye!